meeting everyone we're going to be starting in a few minutes welcome to bible study just getting settled there's an exciting teaching for tonight i'm going to wait for a few more people to come on but hello to everyone and god bless you this is a great night to be studying the word of god bless you everyone that's coming on you're going to be blessed tonight from our continuation of our teaching i think i'm going to give it about two more minutes and then we're going to get started All right, let's have a word of prayer. I see you coming on. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you tonight as we go into another study in your magnificent word. As we contact you and the Holy Spirit, Lord, let someone that's coming in get a calm spirit to know that you are in control. All of the problems of the day and all of the situations that have happened into our life, we made it one more time through a study to just surrender them into your hands. Lord, I ask for anointing to come into the house of whoever is watching this broadcast and that their faith mixed with my faith and your uh, your anointing would change our hearts and take us closer to you thank you god for your presence here with us and lord we believe right now that everything we've been asking for is going to come to pass so we give you all the glory and honor in jesus name amen well good evening everyone and I know you couldn't wait because I couldn't wait because I've been through some situations this week that have challenged me even in this teaching. If you don't know, we're talking about the power of patience. All of us need it. All of us in here have been programmed to want something now, to want instant gratification. And sometimes with our lives going in all the directions they're going, we get so wound up that we say we deserve it now. Why don't I have it now? Why do I have to wait? Well, that's what we're teaching about, something that is core to the scripture, and that is understanding the anointing, the divine power in learning the fruit of patience. Somebody got it. There is power in patience. So we started out by just letting you know, and I'm going to move quickly because I got a lot to share with you tonight as we move down this path to getting our own spirits calmed down so we can be more patient. Watch this with those we live with, hallelujah, with our spouses, with our children, with those on our job. And can I say the church? Can I say more patient with those in the church? That's right. We got to learn the spirit of patience. And I want to share with you that the spirit of patience blesses us. You now can get connected to and know you're connected with God as you find yourself more patient in situations. I was going to start tonight letting you know a definition of patience is the ability to allow people to irritate you, for situations to trouble you, for things to happen in your life without giving rise to anger and hopelessness. And sometimes the anger and the hopelessness takes us to a place where we can't even receive from God. Somebody here tonight, God wanted you to know, if you ever learn this divine spirit of patience, if you ever let your spirit develop the fruit of patience, something miraculous is going to happen in your life. I can tell you some things about patience. Patience actually will help you live longer. Help you live longer, spiritually and scientifically. Let's look at that. Because when we 
get upset and we get angry and things don't go our way. Someone cuts us off in traffic. Someone says something dumb to me that they already know I know the answer to. What happens is there's something that happens internally in us and it's, t and it's stopping our spirit from being like God or helping us become like God. So when we have that power of patience ingrained in us, and believe you me, it is not easy. I love to come to these Bible studies because a lot of you go to churches where people tell you they got this stuff together. Not me. I'm letting you know right now, I'm learning as you're learning because every day, if I could get an honest answer, there's a reason for me to be patient. So I want to teach you. Somebody got on your nerves this week. Something happened that you just lost control. Something happened that you didn't realize, man, this is a fruit of the spirit and it can not only bless me it can save me and keep me closer to god so i told you that it will also help you live longer maybe that'll help somebody do you know in your body when you get upset about a situation your heart rate goes up your blood pressure goes up then your brain gets worked up the blood starts rising higher and then when the brain gets worked up you know what happens inside our body then all of a sudden our brain releases cortisol it's, it releases something to give us that flight or fight thing going on inside of us so when that cortisol comes if we don't have our spirit in control all of a sudden it can weaken our immune system you know our t-cells or the white cells the white blood cells that actually keep us calm it's those T cells that can get damaged in our immune system. This is this is real. Doctors will tell you getting angry, and a lot of times patience is the precursor. Losing your patience is the precursor to getting angry, and believing you have a right to get angry because someone did something that made you lose your patience. Did they, or did you lose your patience because you're not concentrating on making yourself more like God? So if we notice, a lot of times we'll see that animals don't have to worry about getting ulcers because they got that thing worked out where flight or fight but then they don't let it linger our problem is after we get done being angry that stuff lingers on the inside of us right so let's talk about something i'm gonna give you some i'm gonna give you a direction to go i want to teach you how to have a more patient spirit and know that this is not a benign lesson this is a powerful lesson this is an active spirit that can help you right now and because i am a a father and a husband that means I got some kids y'all and I've had to deal with each kid with their personality and their ways and then you got to deal with your spouse and of course your spouse has to deal with you so there's a lot of this you're going to use inside your home and inside your personal relationship so you can get better so the first thing I taught you last week that there's something called intrapersonal patience here's the here's the first thing you got to learn intra personal intro together right interpersonal means when i am arguing with myself when i'm getting myself not to be upset when i when i know my daughter or my son said something to me in a wayward way and that spirit of dad comes up saying you know that that spirit that says like who are you talking to you know and but you're trying to build a relationship because they're grown kids now so you got to say to yourself okay is that what i want to say right now or if someone gets get on your nerves in church and all of a sudden you know that that's somebody you got to worship with, you got to get that intrapersonal patience button working. Write that down. Intrapersonal patience button. Let's talk about it. So Luke 21, 19 is just going to affirm everything I told you. Look at the word of God. It says, in your patience, you possess your soul. That's where we left off. We talked about suffering last week. We talked about triggers. Well, tonight we're going to talk about the power, recognizing the power in patience, recognizing the power. So the first one is in Luke, it says, in patience, you possess your soul. So here's what God is saying. By patiently bearing afflictions, reproaches, indignities, persecutions, and trying to enjoy yourself even when you're disturbed, what you do now is you turn on that God part of you, that light in you. You turn on that spirit man, and that spirit man kicks in and tells you, remember you're holy. Remember we're trying to be like God. Remember we're going to get blessed. So what happens when I, when I learn to do that, I don't lose my mind. 
And here's the part you need to understand. When he said, you possess your soul, I possess my mind. My biggest battle is in my mind. Some of you don't realize you don't have to be with someone or in some place. You can be in home, in your bed. Can I get an amen? And the biggest battles in your life may start then. So what God is saying is, understand that intrapersonal battle. Think before you move anything. Think before you say anything. Think what God's word would say. Think. What am I supposed to do? Where is this leading? Am I just gratifying my flesh because it wants a pound of flesh? Or do I know that God is watching? I need to be the one giving God glory. And if I continue to do this, it will begin to happen in my life. You don't realize that when you lose your patience and lose control, when people irritate you, you actually can miss your own blessings. I'm serious. You're sitting around and you're worshiping God and you got a heart of love for God. But then all of a sudden you say something like this. You know, you, you get upset with somebody. You just bark out anything. You act like your life is, you know, uh, in, in this separate compartment that that's just that just made me mad here. But I'm still holy. I just had to say that, but I still got God. Yeah, but it affects you. And watch what I'm saying. If you can't keep your irritation down. When you're dealing with what someone says to you or the situation you're in, I just ask you a question. When you can't be patient, how do you know you're going to be patient when you need God to heal you? When you need God to work in the lives of your children? How do you know you're going to be patient when you need God to speak to your heart so that you can hang on and get your blessing? And there's a blessing in being patient. Watch this. Naaman, if you were to go with me, to 1 Kings chapter 5, you know the story of Naaman. The children of Israel found themselves under Assyrian control, and the, and the king of Syria um, had Naaman, who was his chief, you know, head of his army. He was blessed. He was a, a he was a he had conquered many other nations. He had done a battle, and here was Naaman now, because we didn't have patience, we missed out on the whole thing. Here's Naaman now. Naaman is finding himself in a situation where the king of Syria said to the king of Israel after this little girl he kidnapped or the maid he kidnapped from Israel saying that we can we have a prophet in Israel who can recover him of his leprosy. Leprosy was impossible to cure, but this maid who knew Israel and knew the blessings and some of the miracles of Elisha, so the king of Syria wrote to the king of Israel and said, I need you to heal my commander. I need you to heal Naaman. He, he's my confidant. He's the head of my army. And he didn't say it like, you know, you do it because you want to. Remember, Israel was a vassal or they were underneath of, they were paying tribute to Syria at this time. The 10 tribes of the north had been captured and they were paying Syria. So Syria had a right to demand this. And the king just rent his clothes. And then uh, Elisha sent him a message. He said, oh, king, don't worry. Send him to me. Watch what happens. Here's what happens when you're not patient. All of a sudden, he got there to Elisha. If I pick up in verse 9 of the 5th chapter of 1 Kings, it says, Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, first irritation, saying, Go wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman was furious. This is what he said. Surely I thought he'd come out and talk to me and stand and call on the name of his God. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very impatient about getting my healing. And surely I thought that he was going to do something more telling me to go wash in the uh, dirty Jordan River where we got the Abana and the Farfar and the Nile. See, what I'm saying is when you, when you get impatient and the words that start coming out of your mouth and the anger you have will make you even forfeit your blessing because Naaman was not going to get into the river and, and actually go down seven times so he could be healed. Watch what I'm saying. Naaman was so irritated and that impatient spirit got on him that he said, I'm not doing it. But then his servant said, Master, if he had told you to do something hard, you would have done it. Why not just do that and get blessed? Naaman went down and got blessed because he did it God's way. And when we don't do it God's way, when we get irritated by others, we can lose our blessing. I'm giving you a reason to be patient. Why this spirit is so good. Why this spirit is a fruit from God. Because when you get patient, now it'll transcend into other areas of your life. You'll find yourself patient at doctors 
uh, uh, when doctors give you diagnosis, you'll find yourself patient at something that one time would have been devastating and a tragedy, but you're so patiently believing in God that you're saying, if I got to talk nice to somebody to get my blessing, I will do it. You're cultivating that spirit of blessing in your mind. So the first thing we possess is our mind. Get your mindset to say, this is not something where I'm just going to call on God and it's going to happen. No, patience is hard. You got to know what God is telling you to do. What is the power of patience? The power of patience, first of all, will help us keep that mind, get to the place we can get our blessing. Watch this. It's also the power of patience will help you fight your battles. You know Timothy, Paul's protege, who was very timid, as they say, but Paul was leading him and guiding him. 2 Timothy 4 and 7. Listen to a verse you heard many, many times. Paul said, I'm talking about fight the battles. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my race. I have kept the faith. Can we say that? Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only me, but also all those who have longed for, there's the waiting, longed for his appearance. I'm reading the NIV. What Paul was saying is, I've been ridiculed a lot of times, and I've had many battles, but what helped me fight my battles was not ridiculing back, was not seeing who could be the most sarcastic, was not saying, you know, I have a right to this. Here's what Paul said. No, they questioned his authority. If you go to 1 Corinthians, um, 2 Corinthians uh, 10, you find out that in that chapter, Paul talks about how all the um, other false prophets had come along and they were listening to them and they weren't listening to Paul. And Paul could have gotten upset, but he had to defend his authority and apostleship. Come on, I know I got some Bible readers out there. And if you know that famous chapter, is that 2 Corinthians chapter 11, you'll find out that in that chapter, um, in verses 22 to 29, I'll say that again, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Read that sometime and watch how Paul, you want to read all the Pauline epistles and, you know, when Paul says, you know, uh, that I can have peace and I can have, you know, joy, all this stuff, he got that by being patient. Look what he said in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 22 to 29. Read that with me. Everybody was talking about Paul. Paul said, I could tell you some things, but what I'm going to boast in is the, <laughs> is the things I suffered for God. And man, can I, can I park right there for a minute and say this? When somebody gets on your nerves, when somebody says something you don't like, when someone says something to you and you know you know, you should know that by now. And our patience is short. We get that short patience. All of a sudden, we get to a place that we don't remember that we're going to need the same patience to fight our path. Paul remembered. He told them, and starting at verse 22, he said, look, you're, you're boasting about these folks. They're Hebrews. So am I. They're Israelites. So am I. Abraham's seed. So am I. But here's what he did to mess with them. Here's what he said where he got his patience. He said, I speak as a fool. He said, but I've been in labors more abundantly. I've been whipped above measure. I've been in prison. I've been in death five times. I received 40 stripes plus minus one, 39 stripes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night in the day. Wait a minute, Paul. You, you, you went through all of that and you still had enough patience to say in 2 Timothy 4 and 7 when it was time for you to depart. I have fought a good fight. When Paul said he fought a good fight, he was not fighting a fleshly battle. He was not fighting with his own mind. He was not fighting on his behalf. He was fighting to glorify God. I love this because I found out that when I go off, when I get to the wrong side of me, I have to think about how this is hurting God first. And then I got to think about how the fact that it's hurting God means it's going to hurt my walk. I won't be what I want to be. So Paul said, no, I've been in hunger. Sleepiness. Paul went down this whole liturgy of things he said. He said, who am weak and I'm not weak? He said, but I, I boast in the things I suffer. I love that. Because what Paul is showing us, the power to fight all those battles, being whipped, being left for dead, being lonely, being in isolation, struggling. Somebody's talking to me now about a trial you're going through that has not, seems that has no end. Seems like it can't get there. God is saying, just wait, be patient. And if that patient spirit ever got on you, there's going to be a blessing that you never known before. Because the things that used to get on you. I know I got somebody right here. 
in the chat who can put in the chat that you understand some of the stuff that used to bother me is not even worth my time. Some of the stuff that used to bother me, I'm not even going to let it take any of my energy away. I'm going to be patient because I found that God will bless me, which takes us to the next power. Patience will help you keep your mind together when it's time. Patience also will help you fight your battles. Write this down. Power of patience also is required to get your blessing. He said, Pastor, explain that. Let me tell you, there's no blessing you ever got in your life that you did not get by waiting. I don't care because God works through us learning to wait on him. His whole plan of redemption was about God who knows everything, who's omniscient, who uh, he knows He knows what's going to happen down the road. But God makes sure that all things are done decent in order. And watch me, don't miss this, so that there is a residual effect of growth in our life. Watch me, this is so good. Galatians 6 and 9. We say this all the time. Watch this. But I'm telling you, without patience, you're not even going to get the blessing from the seed you planted. Oh, somebody need to write that down. You can't get the blessings from the seeds you planted without patience. What do I mean? Galatians 6 and 9 said, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. That word faint means if we don't quit. That word faint means it's, it's saying in its ancillary corollary, it's saying to us, be patient. Fainting is saying... If I sit there and I believe God is going to send my healing and my symptoms erupt and everything around me out here says it's not happening, but I can't lose heart. I can't give up. I got to patiently wait for God. And if I do, he said, I shall reap. Somebody, I want to encourage you tonight to tell you, yes, it hurts, but be patient. Yes, it looks like it's not happening, but be patient. Yes, it looks like the opposite is happening, but be patient. There is power and joy in being patient. And if you don't quit, here's something to make you shout. God won't quit. God never quits. He, what, if something quit, it wasn't God. If you pray to God and you ask God to do it, God's going to do it. And so we understand that in due season, I can reap if I faint not. David, in all of his trials... You know, one of, the, one of the most famous psalms, and I know you say this song because I love this song, uh, when it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? But if you go all the way down that psalm, and this psalm represents David talking about his endurance as he fought his many battles, his many enemies. You know, as king, he had enemies. David had the enemy in his own heart of his own sin he had to fight. But this psalm says, I, I think it's around verse 13, 14. No, I know it is. He says, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wow. I would have given up unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have fainted. Then he said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Then he ends that song with again, wait on the Lord. Somebody out there, your blessing is there. But it comes through patience because everything we do, you know, we sometimes we think, well, I can get my blessing soon. No, our blessing comes through the fact that we are patiently waiting on God. And as we let God be God, oh, there's a corresponding effect. I got some saints on here that will tell you I was at my last. I was at death's door. I I'm getting a chill. I was at a place where I couldn't even speak forth of how what was going on in my life. I couldn't even tell you, you wouldn't even believe that I'm sitting in church trying to praise God and worship and sing. If you know the stuff that was going on in my body, in my mind, if you knew the things that I was sorting off, I was depressed. I, I know, I, I know, I'm, I'm sorry. Don't turn me off because I know a lot of believers think you don't get depressed. Will you come on and quit? All of us, if we're honest believers, it's when we're in those depths. And I can give you plenty of scripture to show you in the depths of those situations. Won't God keep you if you let yourself be kept? David said, I don't know how I'm going to make this, but you know what I'm going to do? Wait on the Lord. Power of patience. I gave you three things. Power of patience will keep your intra patience, your, your mind thinking, I got to be patient because God is coming. I got to imagine. I got to see by faith what the Lord is doing. Secondly, the power of patience will make sure that I can fight my battles. Because if I can't 
hold my tongue when you make a remark. Oh my God, how I expect to sit there when the, when they get ready to do surgery and I'm, I need faith, but man, I couldn't even be patient enough to wait on God. You got to learn that everything we do is connected to everything else we do. And, and we don't see that. So then we found out the power of patience also is a requirement to get anything you've been praying and sowing for. Let's look at another one because this is how powerful this patience is. The power of patience gives us hope when we are in trials. Romans 12, I'm reading this from a, 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 new, a new language testament Bible, right? So you, but I wanted you to get the effects of it. But Romans 12 and 12, write that down. You can get the scripture later. Rejoice in our confident hope, he tells us. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. <laughs> that, that's enough right there. So, somebody, the, the Holy Spirit just kind of quickened me right there. Somebody got to say, keep on praying. Oh, and can I put aside those saints that tell you only pray once? And if you pray again, it looks like you don't have faith. Can we say that's a lie? It's a lie. Because remember that your faith has to be assured. And God, God's not that picky union. God's not a formula God. We got all these formulas that we get from all kinds of preachers. But the reality is, God said that I can pray without ceasing. So I'm going to tell you right now, keep on praying for this spirit to come in your life. Some things, I, mean, I know there's some people in here besides myself that have prayed all day. That's right. What is all day praying? I got up. I had trouble in my life. I prayed. Went about my business, brushed my teeth, got dressed, went somewhere else. I'm riding down the road. Another thought. I pray. Getting there, getting ready to eat, or I'm sitting at my desk, something else happened, I pray. Where am I praying for? That same situation so God can strengthen me. And then when I get to the point that my confidence is up and my hope is up, I now can allow patience to give me hope. Um, I wanted to give you this story. I wrote it down because it is very intriguing to me. But Nelson Mandela was 27 years Nelson Mandela was uh, locked in prison. I didn't write it down, but I can still tell you. For fighting apartheid. I'm very familiar with this because Nelson Mandela is one of my heroes. And you know that he was part of ANC. They were fighting for equality. And when he first went to Robbins Island, where he was being persecuted, he was there 27 years. And when he went in to that place, he actually, you know, people were, the prejudice was so bad that white folks urinated on him. And they called him all kind of names to make him fit in his feces. And Nelson Mandela himself said, I just had to be patient. He was so patient that he won over his captors. They, they, they didn't know what was going on, but that spirit of God was in him. Because, you know, patience is not earthly, it's, it's heavenly. So he was sitting there being patient as he was being mocked. But here's the thing that messed you up. He did not even develop bitterness and anger toward the white folks that was keeping him in prison. That's how he won them over. No, this is what happened. He actually, uh, his daughter was born while he was in prison. His wife sent over and said, what should he name her? He names his daughter Aziwa, which means, uh, 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 excuse me, Aziwe. I think that's the way you pronounce it. A-Z-W-I-E-Z. -E and what he named her was for patience. He said, I'm going to name her patience. And look at his dialogue. Because I have hope. Nelson, you've been in there 27 years. What kind of hope you got? I have hope. And what God said, I will once again walk upon the grass. He was 71 years old when he got let out of prison and still fulfilled his destiny in God. He became the first president. He brought together black and white folks. He made sure that there was no bitterness so that it could be unity. All I'm saying to you is patience makes you great because patience gives you hope. Because when you got hope, patience says, if I'm being patient with you, that means I'm hoping for a better outcome. Yes, I'm being patient with you, so I'm hoping something is, is going to get. Patience tells me to keep having hope. I want to speak into somebody's life. The blessing is coming not because you were angry, not because you were upset. And even if we do mess up and get angry or upset every now and then, if you get that mind working right, you'll learn to repent and say, God, give me more patience. Let me talk to my wife better. Let me talk to my husband better. Let me not snap on people. I shared with you when we were doing the conflict Bible study that every time, every time, um, if it always looks like everybody's against you, you ought to check the common denominator in that situation with you. So all I'm saying is the only person I can control is me. So when me and Marsha have an argument, um, 
That's right. We, we still argue. Uh, why aren't you listening? I'm telling the truth, baby. We still argue, and we pray, and we learn through our years of marriage how to make sure we don't take each other's dignity and insult each other to the point. And what it means is we learn to be patient with our other person's feelings. There's a whole lot of days we got to keep praying to make that happen. And uh, we've been upset with each other, but the one thing we learned, if we want to glorify God, we continue to do that. So patience will give you hope. You know what? You can make every relationship you have better by being patient. Let's talk about it. Patience, and I told you, I just told you a minute ago, is not earthly, it's spiritual. James 5 and 11 says, James 5 and 11, the epistle of James, as you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. The word persevere is what's up for um, patience. I'm going to share that with you in a moment. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. I, I got to put it together, but I know somebody caught it. God said, we count you blessed because you've been patient. Wow. Then he said, the Lord looks at that patience have mercy and compassion on you and blesses you like he blessed Job. He was so impressed with Job's patience in his suffering that when Job got to the end of his suffering, when he finally realized what God was trying to do in his life, God gave him double. Now think, if God just would have replaced what he had. But isn't this something that when we're patient, God gets so impressed because he knows it's not in us. It's not in him. He gets so impressed that he gave Job the scripture says the Lord is so, so full of compassion and mercy because of Job's patience. So let's talk about why patience is spiritual. Now we're going into something you already understand. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Here, here's the heart. Here, here's the heart of, of the scripture telling us about what patience will do. Um, Galatians 5, 22 says, and I'm reading this from the Living Bible just to give you an explanation. But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, bam, I'll stop there. So that just says, at the moment I'm being patient, it's the Holy Spirit controlling my life. So that means I got to surrender my life to the Holy Spirit because there's a part of James that does not want to be patient right now. He said, when the Holy Spirit controls our life, watch what it says, he will produce this kind of fruit in us. I don't want you to miss that. You can't grunt this thing out. You can say, I'm going to be patient tomorrow. Or I learned a good lesson in church. I'm going to be patient. No, you got to surrender to the Holy Spirit because patience comes from the Spirit in us that God is controlling our life and he produces something in us that's unearthly, that takes us to the divine. He produces something in us that helps us look back over our life and know the trials I got through, I didn't get through because I was all that tough a soldier. I got through because I was patient enough, had enough good sense to know I cannot do this without God. Amen, somebody. So I held on. But I need you to understand something. How patience is produced is because of the Holy Spirit. He controls our lives and he produced love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Now you'll look in your Bible, it says, uh, either uh, forbearing or long suffering, because that's the same word for patience. Now, 23, 23rd verse says, gentleness, self-control, and there is no, there is no conflict, there is no law against that. It's letting us know that patience um, is from God, but when God gives it to us, it's because we also have given ourselves to Him. Ah, uh, I gave that moment to God that I was getting ready to get upset about. I was getting ready to lose it. I was going to tell the lady off in Walmart. I was getting ready to tell, you know, I'm sitting there. I was going to tell somebody off because they know they could have been, you know, I, I told you about going shopping and they got one line and we're lined up. But I learned, I got my phone, start reading my scriptures and say, God, give me some patience. Watch this. Let me give you an understanding because when we go to Greek and Hebrew, it gives us a little deeper understanding. Patience in the Greek is the word hupomone. Write it down. H-U-P-O-M-O-N-E. H-U-P-O-M-O-N-E. It's a compound word made up of hupo, which means under. Don't miss this. 
and moneo in the Greek, which means remain or abide. It's saying I have to remain under a situation I don't like, but I have patience while I'm remaining under. I'm, dis I'm, I'm displaying hupomone. I'm displaying the fact that I know I'm under a trial. I'm under pressure, but I'm going to remain and abide. That word remain and abide means I'm not going to let it waver me and take my spirit out of who I am. So, so watch this. Hupomone means that I have to sit there and remain under. Now, you may like that, you may not, because remain under means we don't know how long it's going to be. Amen. But we do know while we're under, God's doing something. Amen. So what he said, how do I, so we say, our impatience says, man, get out of this situation as fast as I can. I want this over. Hurry up. Get me out of here. But God said, the, the real blessing is when you can remain under in patience. Wow. When you can remain under in patience, the, the real blessing comes in your life. Um, there was a demonstration given me in seminary that I thought about. Because I want you to understand what hupomone means. It means that those of us who are striving to really live for God, you know how somebody say, well, you saved, but I'm saved, saved. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All we're saying is there's a whole lot of Christians out there not living what they're supposed to be living. So you saved, but I'm saved, saved. Well, when I was in seminary, there was an idea that those of us who are striving to be the, the most are the ones who also have to live under the most. Please get that correlation, guys. Here's what he's saying. He gave a demonstration. He said, remember the Roman ships that used to, um, when you, you, you saw them on the gladiator movies? And down below, there were people who were rowing to keep the ship moving. You remember the, ro the oars were always underneath, right? And they'd be rowing in line, and there'd be somebody beating a drum with a pace, you know, row, row. And they had to continue to row as long as that drum was beating. That's not the part I want you to see. Hupamone means on those ships, they had no bathrooms. So a lot of times people would urinate, they would do what they had to do on the sides of the ship, and when the, when they were rowing, a lot of stuff would flow right back into those oars, those rowing. All right, come on, keep your mind clean. But what it was saying is a lot of us who are rowing, we got to row under the worst conditions. Those of us who are keeping things moving, you, you catch it, you're one of the ones keeping the church moving. So you're the ones going to take all the flack. You're one of the ones that want division to work. You're the ones going to take all the flack. You're the one praying for your marriage. You're the one that's going to be under the most pressure. And that means you got to learn that I can still abide under hupomone because even though I'm the one getting all the adverse, I'm also the one being blessed. I'm also the one getting closer to God. I'm also the one being conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Because if anybody was patient, it was our Savior, right? He demonstrated patience to us on the cross. And seven last words, I, I, we, we're going we're gonna to look at some of that next week. We're going to talk next week about being patient with to God for others and understanding that God is the master of patience for none of us would be here. And that's next week. But I want to finish the power of patience. So the second word for patience, I gave you the first one, hupomone. The second word for long-suffering is a Greek word called marosulia. It, it's very, it's so, it's so, it, it sounds just like the syllables. M-A-K-R-O-T-H-U-M-I-A. This one is different than just remaining under a trial. This one is enduring hardship and being in pain or affliction while you're remaining under. This is one that's saying don't get bitter while things are like this because there's some pain involved. See, it's something when I have one of those situations where I have to not lose, lose control because, you know, I'll get out of my nature of being a, a child of God. But it's a different one when I'm in pain and what they're doing is an affliction and I still bear up under it. So if we learn how to be long-suffering, Mar Marcosumia and, Humo and uh, uh, Hupomone are the words that tell us that there's more involved, right? And when I told you that Jesus was long-suffering, 2 Peter 3.15, look what it says. And consider that, 2, Timothy, 2 Peter 3.15, and consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to wisdom gave to him, has written it to you. What he's saying is that God is long-suffering. 
Look at 1 Peter 3 and 20. Who formerly were disobedient, who once the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah. It's saying God was so God was so patient that when everybody was just sinning all over, he was he still kept his divine spirit in a world that was full of sin, waiting on Noah to do what he needed to do. God is patient. And when we learn to be patient, we become just like God. So let's give you some examples of long suffering scripturally so you get this. Man, time is flying, but I want to get this to you. So the first example of long suffering when we're in time is if you go to 2 Corinthians 6, 4, and 5. Here's where I want you to start practicing patience. If you're writing some notes, write this down. I'm going to be patient in my service. I'm going to be patient in my service to God. Um, the foremost charge of a disciple is to be a servant. We, we, we sometimes get this twisted and believe that our job is to be served. You know, we preach so much about blessings, and sometimes we don't, we don't forget. We forget that the reality is we're supposed to bless God first. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. God will take care of blessing us. But if you ever learn to be servant, you remember when Jesus' disciples came to him and said they wanted to be greatest, and Jesus said, the greatest of you shall be my servant. But in this text, um, 2 Corinthians 6, 4, and 5, Paul is talking about how he was patient in service. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody listening right now, you were fed up. People aren't faithful. People aren't doing what they're supposed to do. You are tired of picking up after other people and watching Christians not. I, I know, I know, I know. I've been there. But God is saying, no, you give patient service. I'm going to reward you for your patient service. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Look what Paul said in um, 2 Corinthians 6, 4, and 5. But in all things, 2 Corinthians 6, 4, and 5. But in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. Look what he said. In much patience. You know the word minister means servant, right? In much patience, in tribulation, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonment, in tumult, in labors, in sleepiness, in fasting. It says we commend ourselves as ministers unto the Lord. All right, I need you to, this is improv, but my, my spirit is being pressed to do this. Can you bow right where you are? God told me to pray for some of you right now. God said pray. There's some servants here under, under pressure, under power. There's somebody here. That you didn't even realize that it was your servant the devil was after. And the spiritual warfare you're dealing with is because of your servant. I want, I'm going to finish that, that little lesson, but let me pray right now. Somebody needs to hear this. Father God, I thank you right now for your servant. They've been in affliction. They've gone through some situations where they had to be long-suffering and it was dark and they did not see the light, but they kept on pressing. Let them know it's not for naught. Let them know, God, that you see and hear. You've seen every tear. Let them know, God, that right now, because of their faithful patience, as they are waiting on you and continue serving you, and as they do that without complaining and griping, that you're going to put send a relief to their lives, God. You're going to send a special blessing to their lives. They're going to find some energy and strength and they don't know where it came from. They're going to find, Lord, that you have given them a direction, a new direction, a new resilience. They're going to be restored in their mind. They're going to sleep better at night. They're going to get up because they're going to find themselves in that pocket of safety because when they were giving service, they knew they were giving service to you. Thank you, God. Hold them up. Every tear dries. Every time they feel it, let them know you honor your servant. Thank you, God. Receive that, somebody. Receive that because I know that we, we a lot of times when we, we're teaching, we try to always harp on what people are doing bad. But sometimes you need to understand the context God is saying. Paul said, if you can be long-suffering in service, not complain about what you do, but realize it's God giving you the strength to do it. If you can be long-suffering in service and not wonder what anybody else is doing, but think that God gave you the air, you're still above earth, you still have the ability. Somebody don't understand. When I am long-suffering in service, 
I'm on borrowed time anyway. I'm on God's dime. I'm I'm sitting there under working under God's strength. So I learned a long time ago, it could be worse. I have no business complaining because there's folk that wish they could do, wish they had the opportunity to do what I'm doing for the Lord. So I got thought I just bring that in. We gotta learn. So the first place is in service. Paul again is saying that I learned my patience in service. And the second example is you can be patient in your faith. This is a good one. Um, I had many examples here, but the one that always um, takes me to a place of understanding what it means to have nothing, but knowing that if I have nothing and I still got God, I got everything. I'm having nothing, but I know if I still have God, I have everything, so my faith doesn't go down. Somebody hear me? If you have God, you have everything. Somebody put that in the chat if you can. I'm going to keep moving on. If you have God, you have everything. That's how your faith works. So let's talk about it. The widow of Zarephath. First Kings 17. And in, we, we can look at the verses 8 to 16 of the whole text. But I'm not going to take you to the whole text. But if you have patience in your faith, your faith will work better because you're patiently working. What happened? We know the story that there was a uh, there was a plague, right, a famine, and God, after taking Elijah from the bush and feeding him, sent him to the widow. God said, "I set a widow to take care of you," and He sent Elijah to the widow. Uh, this is First Kings seventeen. I'm sorry. He sent Elijah to the widow, right, and He told her the widow, who what's really crazy is, you know, when God sets us up for faith, He usually sets us up with something that we don't see the earthly power. We gotta believe in the heavenly power by faith. Because there was a widow who had nothing. And when Elisha got to her, she said, I have nothing. So Elisha said, can you bring me a little water? And she said, yes. Then he said, also, can you bring me a little cake? And the woman looked at him and said, look, sir, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I only have a little bit of meal. I'm making a small cake for me and my son. We're gonna eat that. And then we'll probably die because we don't know what else is going on. Then he did a big ask. Same one God does. He said, bring me first, and God will bless you. Bring me first. If you bring it to me first, thus saith the Lord, your flower will never run out. But you got to do it by faith. If you bring it to me first, whatever you need will continue to come. But you got to do it by faith. I'm, I'm telling you right there. I don't know who's watching me, but you need patience to have faith. Because things are going to look bad, they're going to feel bad, they're going to be bad. But you got to have enough patience by faith to say, I'm going to let my faith work by patience. Watch what happens. And the Bible says she went and did what he said. And I love this. And the flour and the meal never ran out. Patience in my servant. Patience in my faith. Can I give you one more before we close today? Patience in my miracle what am i saying um patience will bring a miracle because along the way to getting a miracle you're going to hear so much so much negative talk so many evil talk so many people that don't have faith try to talk you out of your miracle um some people are so intelligent you know that some of them are so biblically holy they'll sit there and tell you what god is not going to do i'll never forget i had a, a young lady there was a man prophesy over me about something they 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 thought the Lord was doing in my life, and um, but it was a it was against what I had asked the Lord for. Anybody with me? When when someone comes to you and your, your miracle, you've already asked God for something, and immediately can you put it together that that negative thought was the enemy causing spiritual warfare, because he knew that God was going to give you what you wanted. Wow, God's going to give you what you want. If you continue to believe in your miracle, how do I get a miracle? By patience. Let me give you a story. Um, if you go to Hannah, 1 Samuel 1, we all know the story of Hannah. What a powerful story and belief Hannah had in God. Hannah was in a place where she was ostracized and scorned in the community. Because one of the worst things that could happen to a woman was to be barren. 
I say that because I want you to put your trial in perspective. Because sometimes you go through a trial where you're ostracized by, by people. But God is still working in you. And that's what you got to hold on to. So Hannah was ostracized. Remember, Elkanah had two wives, Hannah and Peninnah. Peninnah had kids everywhere. But Hannah, all she wanted to be was a mom. That's all she wanted. And because of the fact, listen, now you know this is a miracle. She had been trying and trying and trying. Nothing happened. Many times we, 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 we give Hannah's story and we talk about what the vow she made. But can I take you to verse 7? And I tried to look this up, some extra biblical research, and nobody even knows. But in verse 7, it says, she went to the temple year by year with her husband. They would go down, you know, and, and do what they needed to do in the temple as good Jews. And she would go sometimes. Sometimes she would stay home and suffer. But it says, year after year, she went to the temple of the Lord. She was provoked and she wept, meaning, and no baby came. Now, I want you to focus on year after year. I'm doing that because we're doing a lesson on patience. You have already put a window on God. You already told God when it's supposed to happen. God said, no. Uh, all you got to do is be patient. I will bring it in due season. But look what happened. Then it says, Hannah went down year by year. So she kept her faith in God. And nothing happened year by year. But then in verse 9, we see something astonishing. Uh, verse 10. Well, verse 9, she went down again. But in verse 10, um, she was crying in the temple again. I love the fact that God... Uh, hears our tears. That's right. I, I didn't say it backwards. God hears our tears. Yeah, he, he's such a strong God that he even knows when we're crying. And he comes to rescue us and see about us. So it says in verse 10, watch the pain in his voice. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. She was in bitterness of soul, prayed to the Lord, wept in anguish. Then the text says, then she made a vow. I know, I know I'm teaching, not preaching, but then she made a vow. She didn't make the vow when everything was going. She made it right in the middle of her bitterness. Somebody here ought to catch that. Make your vow to the Lord. Make your stand to the Lord. Not when it looks like ducks are lining up, when it looks like everything's in shambles. Her life was still in shambles, and it says she made a vow to the Lord. She said, O oh Lord of hosts. If you will indeed look upon the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and forget me not, your maidservant, but will give you your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And no razor shall come upon his head. The vow of the Magi. Right? But understand what I'm trying to teach you here is that we, we, we celebrate all these things happening in Scripture, but they all happen through a spirit of patience. It wasn't the work was done and happened. You, you, rarely do you see something happen in it instantly. Somebody has cried. Somebody has prayed. Somebody has put the time in. Somebody has said, I need you to do this, God. You know what I mean? We want stuff to happen instantly, and it doesn't happen that way. So Hannah, then God gave her a child because she was patient enough year by year to continue to vow to God are you out there in anguish tonight um, I got some things going on in my family in my life that I want to be over but God has given me a spirit of patience while I'm going through them um, patience and I, I started out telling you patience will keep your mind right it's, we possess our soul by being patient my mind says it could be storming outside but my mind says trust God and I'm going to trust God because that's what God does and a lot of times we can't be patient because we try to do it ourselves I want to make sure we understand this is a God thing where we give our service to God and he will bless us for it it's a requirement for you to get your harvest it will help you fight your battle it will keep your mind together It'll help you get hope when, 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 you're, when you're in the middle of stuff. And also, it'll help you understand perseverance. That's what patience, that's how powerful patience is. You know, we learn so many things. Um, there's this uh, little story about this guy who came to this farmer, 
he went to his house and he was sitting, the farmer was sitting on the, on the porch with his legs crossed and, and you know, and his fields were in terrible condition. Everything was burnt up, rotten, and this salesman came along and said, I got this book here that will teach you how to grow corn. It'll tell you the best time to plant. It'll tell you the best time to water. It'll tell you what kind of seed you need to plant. It'll tell you um, how to watch for it coming up and when to go out and cultivate. And he said, I tell you, everything in this book I got. You need this book, sir, looking at your field. The old man looks over at him and says, um, my problem is not reading the book. I know what to do. I just don't do it. Many of you, when confronted with a situation where you can be irritated, I'm not talking to that one in church no more. I'm through with them. You just messed up on your own salvation. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say nothing else. Let them. Let them fall. Let them have it. God said, No. You got to even be patient with folks because every time I'm patient, I start bringing in the characteristic of God. So, I hope this lesson. I hope this teaching and blessing you share it with somebody and i just want to put it in the context you know we're coming up to valentine's day and the honest folks out there you know we'll, we'll let you know man being married and being in friendships and relationships are the hardest place i gotta learn to be patient because there can be some lasting effects if i'm not patient in my relationship i'm praying for everyone tonight god bless you uh thanks for tuning in you could have tuned into any bible study but i know the spirit of god led you here Please allow this to bless you as you go through your week. And if you practice this patience and learn one thing tonight, here's the thing I want you to take away. Patience comes from yielding myself to the Holy Spirit. So next time before you open your mouth, before you lose it, yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. And that fruit of the Spirit will come out. God bless you. Have a great night. This is Pastor Duncan. And I'm saying um, have a great worship wherever church you go. Make sure you're there worshiping God. God deserves your worship. People are leaving here. They're dying. Thank God every day to be grateful that you're still here and God will bless you. Have a good night.